I changed my mind about toxic masculinity. I used to think it was total BS, but I actually do in fact now think that it definitely exists, but not necessarily in the way that you might think. Because the traditional way that I guess feminists call toxic masculinity is like, oh, well, if you challenge a guy's masculinity and say like, oh, you're not man enough, or oh, you're a pussy, then that's toxically masculine. I think that is completely wrong. And if anything, it actually kind of poisons the well in terms of the conversation that we have about men's topics and what masculinity actually is. So in order for you to understand my true thoughts on toxic masculinity and why I think it definitely exists, I want you to listen to a little bit of a story of a friend of mine and you come to your own conclusions of whether you agree with me or not that toxic masculinity exists. So I have this friend, his name is Kyle and he was really into uh, bodybuilding, especially back in the day. So he was looking for a bunch of different uh, bodybuilding coaches to hire uh, in order for him to uh, compete in a competition. One opportunity came up for him to actually work with uh, one of the top bodybuilders. It was somebody who was actually like a former uh, Mr. Olympia. But this former Mr. Olympia guy, it was pretty obvious that he only achieved what he achieved through uh, his own coaches. He didn't actually have that much knowledge himself. He was just very gifted uh, genetically, but you can just hear the guy speak and understand that he wasn't a very smart guy. And not only is he not a smart guy, he's not a very good person either. I'll get to that in a second. So he was able to work with this guy as long as it was remote because they were uh, far away and they were only going to be able to communicate through text. As opposed to some of the other coaches that he was considering, he would actually be able to meet Meet them in person and actually train with them in person. So I remember looking through my friend's uh, training program that <laughs> this Mr. Olympia guy sent him and it was just the biggest piece of garbage I've ever seen. Like you could just kind of tell based on the prescriptions. It was basically like, oh, do three sets of 10 of this exercise and then three sets of 10 of that. And like you could tell it was very cookie cutter. He was probably sending it to all of these different guys and just using his clout and status as Mr. Olympia as basically just a giant cash grab to get guys like my friend Kyle to uh, you know, cough up a lot of money to say that they're working with Mr. Olympia. So one day we actually got the opportunity to go meet Mr. Olympia, uh, Kyle and I, because he was at a local uh, fitness expo. And so I remember Kyle went somewhere else and we were like in line to meet him, which is already kind of weird. It's like, dude, if it's your coach, why do you need to wait in line with fans to go talk to him? But anyway, after waiting in line for a little bit, I was able to come face to face with this Mr. Olympia. You guys can guess in the comments which Mr. Olympia you thought it was and what category. But anyway, I said, hey man, I'm friends with Kyle. And he's like, who's Kyle? And then I said, Kyle, and then the guy's last name. And then he was just kind of sitting there and he was like, oh, okay, cool. But you could kind of tell that he actually didn't know who this was. And then according to him, Kyle met up with him a little bit later to say hi or whatever. And then I told Kyle what happened afterwards and he was just like in complete denial about it. I was like, dude, I don't actually think that this guy knows who you are. But Kyle was just such a big fan of his. He was just in complete denial. And honestly, if I ask him about this, to this day, he would probably still be in denial at the fact that he basically just got scammed by some guy. More than likely, I'm speculating here, when he was texting Mr. Olympia, it was probably somebody else and not actually the real guy. So instead of actually training with a coach that he could have seen in person who actually would have gave a shit about him, he chose Mr. Olympia through which uh, he was just you know, having text conversations with and cookie cutter programming. And this led me to kind of think, what's wrong here? What's the problem here? Like logically, this makes no sense. Why would he have chosen this Mr. Olympia guy through this robot cookie cutter programming rather than an actual coach. Essentially, he was a victim of both the bandwagon effect and the appeal to authority fallacy, which is basically saying, oh, well, this person is a big authority, therefore they are correct. And I find these two things to be very, very common, especially among young men, because a lot of young men tend to not really have a strong father figure or brother figure in their lives. 
And so they're always kind of sort of seeking for this like kind of superhero type guy to follow this, this guy that's kind of like infallible and has it all figured out. They get sort of blinded by their desire to have this sort of like guy to simp for. Like you see it a lot within the Manosphere space, for example, like a lot of guys will learn to stop simping for women, but then instead they'll start simping for some dude and it's usually the guy that told them to stop simping for women. And I think really what it comes down to is this sort of like childish idolatry of, of certain men that these guys want to become like, right? So my friend Kyle wanted to become Mr. Olympia. Therefore, he was like, well, I better follow Mr. Olympia. He must know something or otherwise he wouldn't be Mr. Olympia. And, you know, maybe he'd have a point if he was actually working with him, right? But because he was so blinded he was such a big fan of this guy he just wanted any sort of way to work with him without seeing the obvious warning signs that he's actually not working with him he's working with somebody else and they're just using his name and so essentially what toxic masculinity is to me is basically just being a giant fanboy it's almost sort of an extension of like the whole mentality of my dad is perfect, my dad can beat up your dad. Like a lot of guys don't let go of that mentality. They always sort of need this kind of role model to strive after to try to become. It's almost like this form of arrested development almost. And so especially within the online spaces, the red pill space, manosphere, whatever you wanna call it, I see this a lot. There's toxic masculinity everywhere. Again, the toxic masculinity being fanboyism and the thing that makes it so toxic is them believing that like genuinely believing that there is a guy out there that has it all figured out that there is this guy without any flaws that can just you know speak the truth down from the mountaintops down to us little peasants here down on earth in the hopes that one day his wisdom will be able to help us become like him one day it's a load of BS, it's dangerous, and it's toxic because that is completely opposite of what true masculinity actually is. True masculinity involves somebody being radically honest with themselves, radically honest with others, and has enough strength and courage to truly be who he is and trying to be humble enough to admit his faults and try to become better. But it's very rare that you see that nowadays because there's such a culture of underdeveloped young weak men who have daddy issues who are secretly trying to look for an idol that doesn't exist and so there are many guys who take advantage of that whether that be in the fitness industry in the form of taking a bunch of steroids and acting like you don't so you look like a superhero and then you start acting like a superhero in hopes that some young guys will start to idolize you and, and start simping for you and you see that within the self-improvement manosphere space as well of these guys claiming to be the arbiters of the truth claiming to you know here's your red pill here's the truth bro when in reality all that's happening is they're unplugging you from one matrix and putting you back into another and the reason that they're able to do that is because of this toxically masculine idea that there is even such thing as a guy who understands the full truth about female nature the toxic masculinity that feminists talk about is just a giant red herring that distracts from the real toxic masculinity that is thinking that some perfect ideal man out there exists that you can model off of to try to become one yourself one day it's a load of bs and to be masculine is not that. To be masculine is to be somebody who has a lot of problems like any human being, but has the strength and courage to overcome them. That's why I encourage on this channel for guys to become radically individualistic and not just become some part of some cringy pill cult or manosphere cult because you're not actually solving your problems by doing that. You will actually become more masculine by becoming more of an individual and not simping for some dude that you never even met. That's my thoughts on toxic masculinity. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Thanks so much for watching as always. See you next time.